In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God feeds God's people with the bread of life. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 81. O oh, sing joyfully to God our strength, Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Make music and beat upon the drum. Sound the lute and the melodious harp. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon of our day of festival. For this was a statute for Israel a commandment of the God of Jacob, which he laid on Joseph as a solemn charge when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice that I had not known, saying, I eased your shoulders off the burden, and your hands were freed from the load. You called to me in trouble, and I rescued you. I answered you from the secret place of my thunder. I put you to the test at the waters of Meribah. Listen, my people, and I will admonish you. O oh, Israel, if only you would hear me. There shall be no strange God among you nor shall you bow down to an alien God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I left them to the stubbornness of their hearts, to walk according to their own designs. If only my people would listen, if Israel would but walk in my ways. 
I would soon put down their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those that hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel, I would feed you with the finest wheat and satisfy you with honey from the rocks. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24 reading from verse 13 to 35. Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of hearts to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said and all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So we went in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? 
they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Here ends the lesson. Our reading tonight offers us the very well-known text of the road to Emmaus and Jesus' encounter with the two people who were walking on the road. And as they were walking, Cleopas and the person with him, they were talking about the events of Jesus' death. And Jesus joined them, and he must have been in human form, but they could not identify him as Jesus. And then they went ahead and gave him a summary of his own life events. But they were, I believe, very traumatized by what had happened. They were suffering from grief at the loss of Jesus. They were traumatized by the events. And they had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. So even that hope was gone and they must have been severely disappointed. And so their eyes were closed and they could not recognize Jesus. They were so overcome with their trauma, they were so overcome with their grief that they didn't really pay attention to the stranger that was walk walking with them. And they didn't even inquire from him when he explained the scriptures to them. And so they invited him to stay with them. And as they gathered at the table, Jesus says he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. It is in these words and actions that they eventually recognize Jesus the words are almost identical to the words Jesus used at the Last Supper. I am sure that this was intentionally done by Jesus. He knew that they would recognize him in the breaking of the bread. They would hear the similarities and be reminded of his previous words. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. One can clearly hear the Eucharistic tones or references in these words. Today, we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi in the life of the church. This celebration is associated with the commemoration of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples before his crucifixion. We instituted the Holy Eucharist. We celebrate the presence of Christ in the Eucharist and we remember that we say, may it become for us his body and his blood. The walk to Emmaus reminds us of the importance of participating in the Holy Eucharist. It is here that we are reminded of Jesus' death and resurrection. We are often so overcome by life, traumatized by life events, overcome by grief and loss, that sometimes we don't recognize Jesus' presence with us. Our eyes seem to be closed and we seem to be prevented from seeing him by our own trauma and loss. It is, however, in the Eucharist when we receive the body and blood of Christ again and again, that we are reminded that he is alive, that he is with us and in us, walking the road with us. And so in the Eucharist, we can look back 
and see the redemption and the salvation that the Lord has won for us. And we can look forward with new hope, knowing that Jesus is with us. So I pray that we too may make every effort to receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and that our hearts may burn within us knowing that we are in the presence of the risen and ascended Christ. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the baptismal creed. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of Terikika in the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. We pray for the Right Reverend Paul Modi Fajala. We pray for Sudan, for the people the leaders, we pray for God's peace, we pray for the role of the church, that the church may effect its agency for peace and the word of God and the protection and comfort of God's people. We also pray for the Church of St. John in Alliston, St. Mary Ebiston, St. Hilda Alaburn, All Saints Thorntondale, St. George in Wilton, and Thorntondale Primary School. We pray for the Bishop, and we pray for the Reverend Joe Kinsala, who ministers in those parishes. In our own diocese, we pray for the Church of the Reconciliation Mannenberg. We pray for the Reverend Ronald Miller, the rector, and Reverend Glynis Rhodes, the deacon. We pray for clergy, their families, the 
parish leadership, people, and their families. Lord, as we pray for the church in Manenburg, we pray for the safety of all God's people. We pray that by your grace and your power, a resolution may be found to intervene and stop the gang violence with its negative effects on all God's people in Manenburg. We pray that the church will be a beacon of hope. We pray for God's protection on all God's people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the world today, we remember Ocean's Day. We pray for the protection of the biodiversity which is ocean bound. We pray for the political world to protect our oceans and to work against the pollution of our oceans. We pray for all organizations and ministries which work tirelessly for all sea creatures and to protect our oceans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this cathedral church, we pray for those who are not well. We remember Jennifer Hanslow, Marcus Slinger, Paul Maltino, Sean Fulyun, Veronica Reinefeld, Carl Gruppe, Julian Titus, and Trevor Lawrence. Lord, we bring them before you, praying that your healing power will rest upon them, that they will be restored and uplifted. In our year's mind, we remember today Penny Tim and Audrey Scott. We pray for their loved ones, those who remember them and long for them in this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priest be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace. And let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. I pray the collect for Trinity Sunday followed by the Collect for the Commemoration of Corpus Christi. God of unchangeable power, you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keep us firm in this faith that we may praise and bless your holy name. For you are one God, living and reigning in glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, gave us the wonderful sacrament of his body and blood to represent his death 
and to celebrate his resurrection, strengthen our devotion to him in these holy mysteries, and through them renew our unity with him and one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace, followed by the Evening Collect. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.